All right. So today we're doing um, cold weather safety. So I'm going to go to screen share here. Like I got a thousand things opened up. Where is it? It's right there. Share computer. All right. So we're going to get to the start. And we're going to hit play. All right. So cold weather safety. Um, so we want to make sure when it's cold, you guys, this is really important. So whether you're here at home or if you're at home or you're, you come to work, make sure you guys are dressing appropriately. I know sometimes people say, well, I don't get cold. You know, that's what my kids say. I don't get cold. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm warm blooded. It's still really important to uh, dress in layers, right? Um, protect, this says protect your um, extremities, right? So your extremities are your hands, your arms, your neck, your ears, your feet. Um, protect them by wearing um, a hat that covers your ears or waterproof gloves, wool socks. So right now, if you're going out in public, pretty much we all have our masks on, right? Um, but it's a good idea when it's really cold or if it's really windy, especially like Justin, you have very short hair, you know, to wear a, um, a beanie or a hat to keep your head warm. Wear warm and waterproof footwear. Work appropriate boots or high tops will help keep your ankles protected and warm. So here, I'll show you guys my boots. I got these big boots here. Woohoo! They keep my ankles protected. Also helps protect them from getting twisted so I don't twist my ankle. But then I wear some nice long socks underneath them um, during the winter. Not the ankle socks that you might wear during the summer. In the winter, you want to wear socks that cover your ankles or wool socks um, to keep your feet. I personally think there's nothing better than putting on soft, fluffy socks when it's cold. It keeps your feet so warm. So wear warm and waterproof footwear. Wear or and if you wear appropriate boots or high tops. Oh, I already said that. Um, like if it's really cold, you don't want to wear flip flops. You know, don't wear sandals and socks. That's just not right. I know a few people that do that actually. Um, you know, wear wear ones that are and keep your feet nice and warm. Um, when it's very cold or when the wind chill is significant, cover as much exposed skin as possible. So that means no tube tops. Don't wear a bikini top out in the cold weather. Um, the idea that most of your body heat is lost through your head is a myth. So, you know, my mom used to always say, you need to put a hat on, you need to put gloves on, otherwise you'll catch cold. The truth is your body loses most of its heat through whatever is exposed. So that means just because you have a hat on and gloves on, it doesn't mean you should wear a tank top outside. So stay covered and you'll stay warm. So that's really important when you guys are coming outside and look at the weather before you go outside. So you're not surprised, you know, like uh, the other week it was gorgeous outside. It was nice and warm. You could even wear shorts still. And then this Monday it was freezing over the weekend it rained. How many of you saw hail? Did you guys see hail outside this weekend? Maria saw, Amy, yeah. Um, so we have crazy weather out here. So look up what the weather report's gonna say so you can dress appropriately. Um, it's really good to wear layers. So this is something I didn't know. So um, if you guys wear an undershirt, um, try and use polyester or silk or something that's gonna wick sweat away from your body. I don't know if you guys have done this, but you wear so many, Maria's got layers. I can see that you wear so many layers underneath that you sometimes get really sweaty. You know, if you go inside where it's warm and then you'll notice when you go back outside, you get a chill. And it's because if you're wearing like a cotton shirt underneath and you sweat, that cotton shirt's just gonna hold on to that sweat. And when you go outside, it's gonna make you cold again. And so that's why they recommend wearing like a polyester moisture wicking clothes like you would get for, for working out in. 
Um, the middle layer, you want to make sure that's nice and insulated. So sweatshirts. I see a number of you guys wearing sweatshirts right now. I'm wearing a sweatshirt. Shauna's wearing a sweatshirt. Josh is wearing a nice long sleeve shirt. So that's a really good middle layer. Um, something that uh, will be snug, but not tight, right? You, you don't want to, you don't want to feel like this guy here in the picture. And then the outer layer, um, you want it something that's usually if you're outside, like something that's uh, water resistant or does a really good job at blocking the wind. So if it's not raining outside, you know, a nice thick wool coat will work. Um, but if it is raining, you want something that won't absorb the water like a wool coat would. So in that case, you'd want something that um, is waterproof. So those are for um, the type of clothes you should wear. So space, uh, most common misconception about dressing warm is layers should be tight. But if your layers of clothing are super tight, then it might actually, um, you know, it could make you, whoops, it could make you sweat and end up making you actually feel colder. So if you have it a little bit loose, then that looser um, clothing is gonna create a thin boundary of air between your skin and it'll actually heat that loose uh, boundary of air up from your body heat. So if that makes sense. But I really like this cartoon. <clears throat> How my kids dress for cold weather, t-shirt, no hats or gloves, and they're in the snow. No How pants. I dress, no pants either, that's right. <laughs> this person's wearing a bulky sweater, a scarf, wool cap, mittens, and this is just for indoors, right? So how many of you are indoors and you're wearing a bunch of clothes right now because you're like, I am cold. Yeah, yeah, I feel you on that. So um, if you're cold indoors, make sure you're definitely wearing more for when you go outdoors. So just to review a few of these things, uh, make sure you're wearing nice full socks, appropriate shoes, something to cover your head, um, wear layers. So then that way, as you warm up, you can take layers off um, and it'll also help keep you warm. And then don't have clothes super, super tight, you know, have it just fit normal, just fit normal. You know, we don't need a, a skin tight bodysuit or overly baggy clothes, just whatever is supposed to be your size. And then you want to stay dry. So this is really important. You don't want to get your clothes wet. So if it's cold outside and you're not wearing your galoshes or your um, rain boots and your rain jacket, don't, don't be dancing in the puddles because you're going to get wet and then that's going to get you more cold. And then what happens is when your body gets cold, it's trying really hard to keep your body warm. And that actually um, can lower your immune system. So this says keep active, but avoid exertion, right? So cold muscles are less uh, elastic and more prone to injury. So it's a good idea. If you're going to do anything active outside, you're going to go play in the snow you can go sledding, you can go for a hike. Uh, do a little five minutes of brisk walking or move around with your arms to generate body heat to prevent injuries from happening. Um, keep moving throughout the day to keep your body warm. So if you're just sitting out there in the cold, you're just going to keep getting colder and colder until you're in, unless you start moving around. And if you have to do heavy work outdoors in the cold, so let's say you have to go rake up leaves or um, mow the lawn, um, Make sure you dress warm and try to work. Don't go too fast because <clears throat> if you go too fast, um, you might overdo it and um, that could also cause injury. So the next slide we're going to go to is how to avoid getting sick this winter. Okay, so we're going to watch a little video on that first before I go over this. So I'm going to go new share a mom. You know, moms always know what the right thing to do is. So we're Hi, gonna... my name is Anne for Houdini. I'm here to share the five biggest mistakes you can make during flu season. Mistake number one, not washing your hands enough. The Centers for Disease Control say that keeping your hands clean is one of the best ways to prevent the spread right. of infection and illness. You should pay uh, attention any time that you've been out that. in public touching doorknobs, after you use the bathroom, any time before or after you eat, and before or after you touch a computer. 
computer keyboard. And wash the right way. Scrub your hands with soap for about 20 seconds, then using warm water, rinse thoroughly. Proper hand washing is the most important thing you can do this flu season to avoid getting the flu. Mistake number two, touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Germs thrive in warm, moist places, so do all that you can not to touch them when your hands are dirty. So remember, no touching. Mistake number three, not getting enough rest. We should all be getting an average of eight hours of sleep. When you get less, it can make you more susceptible to disease. Mistake number four, going to work or school when you feel sick. A lot of people are stubborn about missing work or school, but these settings put us close to people for extended periods of time. Plus, you'll stay sick longer if you don't get enough rest. Mistake number five, coughing or sneezing into your hands. Best place to cough or sneeze is into your elbow in your sleep. When you cough or sneeze, germs exit and can spread up to six to 10 feet. Then make sure you wash them right away with a great high quality soap. Okay, that's our five. We can't guarantee that avoiding these mistakes will keep you from getting sick, but they will help. And always remember, make sure you wash your hands. So I just thought that was a good little short video on ways to stay healthy. And so we're gonna review those items right here on our PowerPoint. That lady, I gotta tell you, when she was rubbing her nose like that, kind of grossed me out. <laughs> so on the video, she's, she tells us to wash our hands and wash with soap for 20 seconds. So we've talked about this before. So you wanna wash your hands, you actually wanna squirt the soap so I'm going to use this hand sanitizer as an example. You squirt it in there and we're going to sing the happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I'm getting my fingernails in between my fingers. Happy birthday to you. And it's good to get your wrist too. Um, sometimes you have to move your watch and then you rinse your hands off. So during that time, it's not, hey, soap on wash under the sink and that's 20 seconds you're actually rubbing the soap on your hands for 20 seconds and what that does is you know you have natural oils and stuff that come from your skin and that's what the bacteria and the viruses like to stick to and the soap is like uh it's like a degreaser kind of it's washing away that those oils on your skin that all the germs viruses and bacteria have um stuck to and then when you rinse it off with water it washes them all down the drain so that's why it's important to do it for at least 20 seconds so don't touch your face this one is really really hard for some of us i'm going to admit it is hard for me to not touch my face i'm just a fidgety person in general i um, really struggle with not touching my face and the nice thing is when you wear a mask right so now if I want to touch my face, I can still touch my eyes. So I have to be mindful of that. But like that lady was rubbing her nose and stuff like that. And it was just like snotty and gross. I can't do that when I have a mask on. So that's really nice for that. So it mask also keeps the germs from spreading out into the air, but it also prevents us from touching various parts of our face. Now, let's say you're somebody that really likes to rub your eyes, then maybe you need to put some glasses on. You know, you can get the, even if you don't wear glasses, they have the cutest glasses at some of these stores um, that are just fashion glasses. So then you can put glasses on and it'll help, you know, I don't have my reading glasses right now because I don't know where I put them. But, you know, if I have sunglasses on, it's a lot harder. I have to go underneath. And so by that time that I'm starting to go underneath and I can mentally remember, hey, you know what? Don't touch your eyes until you've washed your face. All right. So and sometimes we just can't help it, you know. So if you're going to do that, just be, you know, maybe use a, always wash your hands first. But if you absolutely have to, maybe try to use a body part that doesn't touch things as frequently as your fingertips do. So rest, sleep for eight hours. I know this is hard for some of us to sleep for eight hours. Some of us want to sleep for 10 hours. Um, some of us sleep for five hours because we were up till two o'clock in the morning playing video games. So um, it is important to get rest. And if you start feeling like you're exhausted and run down, that's a good sign that you need more sleep. And maybe your immune system, which is what fights off colds and flus and coronaviruses, 
is being compromised. Maybe it's working overtime. So make sure you get plenty of rest. If you didn't sleep very good the night before, if you're able to take a nap, I love naps. Don't go out when you feel sick. So this is really important for multiple reasons. If you go out when you're feeling sick, you risk getting somebody else sick. So that's not good, right? We don't want to get somebody's grandma sick or somebody's, you know, uh, son sick or, or sister sick. So don't go out when you're feeling sick. The other thing is, is if you're feeling sick, your immune system's working really hard to make you better. Well, when you go outside, especially in the cold weather, it's going to have to work that much harder to try and keep you healthy. And so you don't want to do that. It's just better to stay at home and get rest. And then I'm always telling this to my kids, sneeze into your elbow. And if you're really flexible, sneeze into your armpit. Um, somebody mentioned, because we were telling this back in March, we were saying sneeze into your elbow, because that's what we've heard from teachers and mothers for years, right? Sneeze into your elbows, not into your hands, like that picture the lady had, all the glitter on her hands to show bacteria. Somebody goes, well, when you sneeze in your elbow, and it's like, you know, it's, it might hit your elbow, but all those germs are still flying underneath your elbow. So I, I tell my kids, you know, try to sneeze and hold your elbow down, sneeze into your armpit. So then that way it just really holds everything there instead of blowing out all over the place. So on here, this little uh, tip sheet on uh, avoiding getting sick has some really good tips also. Get vaccinated. So some of us raised our hands, we got a flu shot. You don't necessarily need to go to your doctor for that. Um, some doctors don't, you don't even need to make an appointment. You just call and they'll let you come in and the nurse will give it to you. Um, places like CVS and Walgreens and Walmart, um, they all, you can call them and make an appointment. And most of the time your insurance will cover it. Um, so it's really good to get a flu shot right now because with colds out there, those of you with allergies like myself, and then you have the coronavirus and the flu. Um, anything to prevent you from getting one of those things is, is a good thing. So make sure you wash your hands. So washing your hands not only stops, prevents the spread of coronavirus, it also prevents the flu. So make sure you wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Don't go around people that are sick, you know, um, especially if you don't have to. So if you find out, you know, you're going to your cousin's house and you find out that she's got a cold, say, ah, give me a call when you feel better and uh, don't go over there. Don't touch your face. So as I said before, even right now, just talking about touching my face makes me want to touch my face. I just really want to itch it. Um, but try not to, if you can, you really got to itch your nose, get a tissue, itch your nose, throw it away and then go wash your hands or use some hand sanitizer. Exercising regularly. So this says increases your heart rate can boost your body's natural virus killing cells. So find ways to exercise. Exercise with Mary Bell every Monday. We did post a video of her working out on YouTube and I hope, I hope to get a couple more out. Um, I've just been pretty busy, but we'll try and get another uh, couple of videos out so you can work out with her during the week. Um, or go for a walk, walk around your house, you know, um, just find uh, ways, do some jumping jacks. Um, eat more fruits and veggies. So a couple months ago, we talked all about eating healthy and how great fruits and veggies are. They're so full of, this one says phytochemicals, full of vitamins that boost your immune system. So even if you don't like fruits and veggies, maybe you can find ways of eating it in a new kind of way. Um, I eat, drink a smoothie a few times a week and it's like a banana, half a banana, quarter avocado, four strawberries, almond milk, some protein powder, and a cup of spinach. And let me tell you, I don't like smoothies. I don't even like milkshakes. They're not my jam. But that particular smoothie is my favorite thing. It's so good. Even though it's green, it took me a second to drink it because I don't like drinking green stuff, but it's really delicious. So I'll go ahead and post that on Facebook for you guys. And I'll send that recipe to uh, Lorraine and she can maybe put it in your packet so you guys can try it out. Relax. So especially if you're stressed out, or you're tired, or you've been doing a lot of stuff, make sure you get plenty of rest right throughout the day. Um, sleep good. 
Um, so this is really important to keep your body strong. And then the last two, reduce alcohol consumption and do not smoke. So smoking is really bad for your health for many reasons, but it also, um, it has an effect on your immune system. So when you smoke, your body's trying to fight off the damage that the smoke's causing to your lungs that can lower your immune system. Um, so that's how we avoid getting sick on the next slide. We're going to talk really quickly because it is kind of confusing. Like what is the difference between the coronavirus, allergies, flu, and cold? So they have a lot of things in common, but there's also a lot of things they don't have in common. So on this side, we see one of the most common detectors of the coronavirus is your temperature. So that's why we always seek your temperature. If you come here in our facilities, you might see that if you go to your doctor's office or certain buildings, they'll take your temperature. So uh, having a fever could indicate that you have a coronavirus or you could have uh, the flu. So both the flu and coronavirus, there could be a, a cough associated with it. Um, usually if you have shortness of breath, it's not associated with the flu. That's usually something that goes into your chest. So you could have um, bronchitis, you could have a variety of things, but if you have a fever, cough and shortness of breath, um, then you're probably gonna wanna get tested for the coronavirus, especially if you know you were exposed to somebody that has had the coronavirus in the last you know, two days to 14 days. The flu, you have a fever, you have a cough, headache, sore throat, fatigue, muscle and body aches, runny or stuffy nose. So all those things are associated with the flu. But a lot of these are also associated with a cold. You can have a cough with a cold and the flu. You could um, have headaches with both, sore throats with both, runny or stuffy nose with both, muscles or body aches with both. But generally, you, if you have these symptoms and you're sneezing and have watery eyes, most often it's a cold, not the flu. Um, and then the nice thing is, is usually a cold, a cold can last for a really long time. But um, I feel like, you know, after it's peaked in a couple of days, it's a little more manageable. Where with the flu, you're just exhausted for multiple days. Um, allergies. The nice thing is if you have good allergy medicine, a lot of these symptoms can be eliminated, such as sneezing, headaches, itchy, runny, or stuffy nose, itchy, red, or watery eyes. So for those of you experiencing these symptoms, it's a good thing to get on good allergy medicine. That way you're not touching your face like I want to right now with your dirty fingers, touching your nose, um, get on allergy medicine. That way you don't have to feel like you're itching all the time. So that, those are the symptoms uh, between the coronavirus, allergies, flu, and cold. So now we're on to our question portion. So- Thank you, Vicki, that was great. Oh, you're welcome. What about-